guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having an awesome day today and welcome to the first video of Vintage Week. I am so excited to be publishing a video every day this week. So if you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe by clicking that subscribe button down below so you can stay tuned for all the vintage content this week. I'm super excited about this. I love vintage fashion, thrifted fashion, as you guys know, and I also really love fashion history, which is going to play a little bit into the video that I am making today. Today I am talking about five different wardrobe basics that have been in style for 50 years or more. These are things that are in my closet but would be just as at home in my grandmother's closet 50 years ago, and I am so excited to go over the history of these items and also give you options of pieces that you can purchase for your wardrobe today. I will be showing some reference imagery in this video, so in in case you are curious about those sources, I will link to everything down below. But I'm going to go ahead and jump in and talk about these five different items and their history. So first up on the list is the trench coat. And while most of us might associate the trench coat with Parisian classic style or with a spy movie from the 1940s, the trench coat actually came into being during the era of World War I. It was thought to be designed by Thomas Burberry, hence the Burberry trench coats, which are so famous and they were designed for the British military during World War I. That explains a lot of the detailing on a trench coat, such as the tabs on the shoulders. These details were created to be able to clip different equipment to and things like that, so it was a very utilitarian type of garment. And trench coats remained primarily menswear for quite a while, but they really came into fashion for women during the 1960s. And when I think of a trench coat and a classic way to style it, I often think of the way Audrey Hepburn wore them in movies like Charade and Breakfast at Tiffany's. Those are iconic looks featuring trench coats to me. The style of trench coats evolved a bit over the decades. In the 1970s, they tended to be more long line and often were made with materials like leather and suede for a bit more of a bohemian type of look. And then in the 1980s, like many things in fashion, the trench coat got a bit oversized with shoulder pads and bigger collars and it was also a longer line. And then in the 90s it got a little bit more tailored but still a bit more oversized than what we see today. Today what we see for trench coats is most reminiscent of the styles of the 1960s, slightly shorter, a bit more fitted, that very classic trench coat style. You guys have heard me talk about my trench coat quite often if you follow my channel and this is the J. Crew Icon trench coat which I would highly recommend if you're looking for a really classic high quality trench coat that is not going to go out of style anytime soon. This is an absolutely beautiful piece. I ended up getting mine second hand to save a little bit of money on it. It's not super expensive but for me it was out of my budget so it's something that I got second hand but I think it's definitely worth the investment if you're looking for a really high quality trench coat. The material is beautiful. It has all of those classic trench coat detailings, a beautiful silky lining and it's just a great wardrobe staple to have. Up next is the shirt dress. Also sometimes called a shirtwaist dress in history. These are dresses that feature a shirt style bodice, so they will have collars and buttons and different details from a traditional button front shirt. These came into popularity originally in the 1940s and continued to grow in popularity, particularly during the era of the new look started by Christian Dior. Now the bodice of a shirt dress has stayed practically the same since they were first introduced in the 1940s, but the skirt varied throughout the decades based on the styles of the times. So in the 1950s, a shirt dress would have a fitted shirt style bodice and then a very voluminous skirt usually. Sometimes it would be worn with a petticoat and sometimes not so much of a petticoat so that it had a little bit less of a big poofy skirt. The skirt hem usually fell below the knee during this era. And then moving on to the 1960s, the skirts got a little bit shorter but the overall silhouette was pretty much the same. Moving into the 70s, whenever I think of a 70s shirt dress, I think of either Carol Brady or I think of Kitty from that 70s show. The, during this era, they had slightly more slim fitting skirts and then a lot of times they had long sleeves as well. In the 1980s and 90s, they went a lot more oversized, longer skirts and poofier sleeves and just less fitted bodices. And then today, I would say that our shirt dresses tend to harken back to the 1950s, but a little bit more comfortably. They have fitted bodices and then usually a gathered skirt that is around knee length, kind of a mid-length type of style, sometimes shorter, sometimes longer, but they tend to take inspiration from the 1950s. A shirt style dress in my closet is this little white dress that I got from Thread Up. It is slightly more trend-led because it doesn't have a traditional shirt collar. It has this bit of a V style neck here and then it has tortoiseshell buttons up the front and slightly more fun sleeves with these poofy sleeves 
but the overall style is the same a shirt style dress with button front detailing and I absolutely love this one shirt dresses are really readily available at a lot of different retailers and I will link to a couple of down below up next is ballet flats when I think of a good classic shoe ballet flats is just where my mind goes I think they're so classic and beautiful and while they've existed in some way shape or form since the 16th century or before they really took off for women in the 1950s it's often thought that ballet flats were popularized by Audrey Hepburn and when I think of classic ballet flats I do usually think of either Audrey Hepburn or Bridget Bardot wearing cigarette trousers with ballet flats is just so chic and beautiful and I think they're a great classic pair of shoes to have in your wardrobe now a really classic pair that I would recommend are the Reed ballet flats by Madewell they are beautiful leather ballet flats they come in brown and black and then they also do more fun colors in suede and I would like to add a lot of different colors to my wardrobe over time but for now I just have these brown ones and I'm happy with that and they're just a really great classic pair of shoes that I feel like elevate every outfit while still being really really comfortable next up is the striped top and if you know me you know I love a striped top so I had to include it on this list and it was so fun to explore the history of the Breton style top these shirts were first introduced in the 1850s as part of the French Navy uniform. This helps to explain why we often associate a striped top with a nautical look, and it was often said that the stripes made it easier to spot a sailor who had fallen overboard. Breton tops first became popular for women under the influence of one of my favorite figures in fashion history, Coco Chanel. Chanel was influenced by sailor style clothing while staying at the beach during the era of World War I, and in 1917 she introduced her Navy style shirt which was a Jersey Breton style shirt that was shortened for women and this would be a slightly um, scandalous type of thing to wear in 1917 in the era of corsets and Edwardian fashion so it was definitely a statement so it's now been over a hundred years since Chanel first introduced the Breton style top for women and they've remained popular over the last century and I have several in my wardrobe that are thrifted that I absolutely love like this one here but if you're looking for a really high quality one to invest in I have my eye on a beautiful one from Amour Vert, which is on my list to be my kind of long-term investment style uh, Breton top. I think it's absolutely beautiful, so I have my eye on that one and I will link to it down below in case you guys would like to check it out as well. And then last but not least, I couldn't make this list and not talk about jeans because I can't imagine going through a week without wearing them. And we can all thank Levi Strauss and Jacob Davis for this very comfortable fashion trend. Strauss and Davis partnered together to create a line of riveted denim clothing that was really durable in the 1870s. And while jeans were originally intended for workmen, Levi's eventually introduced Lady Levi's in 1934, and they became very popular for women. The marketing was aimed at women who worked on ranches and also women who were vacationing on ranches. And this original pair of Levi's jeans for women had a high-waisted fit and would look kind of similar to what we would think of as a mom jean today. And while rises and washes and cuts have varied across the century, jeans have been popular popular for a really long time now and they made their way into the everyday dressing of Americans in the 70s when it became a very common everyday type of thing to wear. Before that it was very casual clothing. I always think of this episode of I Love Lucy where Lucy and Ethel need to go on the subway and Ethel is scandalized at the idea of going on the subway in her jeans. So that kind of shows you the attitude of the 1950s towards blue jeans. It was definitely at home wear and not something you wore out of the house. And while the styles of jeans have varied so much across the eras, the essence of the style is the same it's still denim and it's still riveted and it's still really comfortable and practical. Now my personal favorite jeans come from Madewell. I love that they are really well made and that they have fair trade and organic options which is really important to me so I really enjoy their jeans. My favorite cuts are high-waisted 10-inch high-rise is my favorite and skinny fit. I think it has a little bit of the look of the cigarette pants of the 1950s and just makes me feel really classic and put together when I'm wearing those jeans. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a thing or two about fashion history through this. It was really fun for me to put together. I would love to hear any fun facts you know about these items down in the comments below. And let me know how many of these you have in your wardrobe. It's so fun to me to look at things that have been in style for so long. So come back tomorrow for another video in Vintage Week. I'm really excited to be posting every day this week. I hope you guys look forward to it, but I'm going to leave it here for now. If you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button down below if you would like to, and I would really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye!